think this group needs <laughs> much of an introduction for Ian. I think we all know him by name and he knows all of us by name. So um, we'll get right into it. But thanks, Ian, uh, for joining. Uh, really appreciate it. I know it takes a lot of time out of uh, your schedule to put this together. So thanks so much. Let's you guys like just interrupt me. Let's have a conversation. Um, we we're thinking of different topics. I know everybody sees five essential flies out of fish. And I thought I'd put a different spin on it. You know, um, I maybe I use the term flies loosely. You tell me, but uh, we'll go there. So first one, if you couldn't guess it, is a pheasant tail. And I'm just really going to talk about the way I think about it. Um, if you haven't heard about a pheasant tail, raise your hand and then release yourself from this call. Just walk away, walk away from the bites. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll take a, there's a, a famous French angler called Gregoire Jugleret, easily one of the best anglers in the world. He said something that, uh, always stuck with me. He's like, if I tie on a pheasant tail, I know I've made the right decision. Any other fly, I could have made the wrong decision. So if that doesn't stick with you in fishing a river, but. I think people get sometimes get confused. How, like, the way I think about it is I try to imitate a mayfly or a midge. Pheasant tail sticks in my head. And I think it's equally good on still water as it is in rivers. And I think if you had to choose one fly to catch a trout or save your life, we'd probably all choose a, a pheasant tail. But I, I'm going to show you some variations of a pheasant tail. As some of you may have seen, you know, seen and then as we talked about how to fish them or how I would fish them anyway. So... Here's some of my favorite uh, pheasant tails, not the specific, specific pattern, but I'm going to talk through the design and how they're used. So a um, so couple things uh, when it comes to a pheasant tail too, like you, there's two different ways to tie it. You see all these ones have um, like a ribbing through it. You know, that's because of a durability thing. I think if you've seen my videos uh, as well, I'll spin the pheasant tail onto the thread and wrap it around the body with a little bit of glue. Uh, I found that's the most durable. So choose your favorite method. I don't rib any of my pheasant tails anymore because it seems like a lot of work and it's an extra material, but uh, no problem doing this. So the top, I'm going to go through the still water side, which is the top row. So uh, anybody guess what that first, this one, you guys see my cursor if I do that? Uh, did anyone know what the top left, what that fly is called? A muskins. So a muskins, and this one's a cruncher. Come and those are two, two of, some people would argue, two of the best still water flies absolutely in the UK. Whether you're a pleasure angler or a competitive angler, they're absolutely deadly. And then the other one is a cove pheasant tail. So Ian James loved the cove pheasant tail. So it doesn't have a tail, kind of bends around here. So it's named after a guy named Arthur Cove. One of the greatest still water anglers of, of of all time, old guy, long I think long dead, but he was you know in the UK is a legend. Um, they still to this day is one of their top midge patterns. So when everything says in tail, they think of the original one, kind of down you know the the original one that was tied. When you if you need to imitate a midge in any size, a cove here, river or lake, this one over here, uh, this is, um, you can see my cursor right when I'm doing this. So this one here, absolutely deadly. So, you know, so you, you uh, and again, my mentor, Ian James, he loved this one too. If you tie it in black, you get the same version of a zebra mage or anything like that. This is what, if you're trying to fish it in a lake, it's on a long leader up to 15 feet. You just fish it dead slow. The key is to just let it kind of come back to a slowly, slow hand twist. Absolutely, one of, still one of the best patterns ever. Um, a cruncher is much more of a kind of a pulling person's midge. Um, so if you if you need a general purpose lake nymph variety of sizes from a midge to a mayfly, it's a cruncher. Uh, a cruncher is absolutely deadly. The, you'll look online if you turn if you look up the term cruncher, you'll see about a thousand variations. One of the UV collar, one of the Nemo cruncher. You'll see blah 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 blah. But really, yeah, they're putting hackle in front of a pheasant tail, but that fly is one of the top, to this day, is still one of the top patterns from everybody in the UK. And people just don't fish them that much over here. And again, you can pull it, you can fish it slow, you can swing it like a wet fly in a river, do whatever you want with a cruncher. And then this uh, fly, which is a muskins, which some might say is just a straightened out cove. Um, sure, um, you know, um, talk to anybody in the UK. They, this one, they got a little bit of UV. That 
that pattern too will just absolutely crush fish that are feeding naturally. So a lot of people, there's lots of variations of, you know, epoxy buzzers and all this kind of stuff. This kind of old school pheasant tail is, is just unbelievable. And if I move my cursor over here, and then if, if you're not familiar with boobies, as a joke there, like, wow. Uh, okay, we'll just say, you know, if the boobies when it comes to flies, so putting eyes in front of it, it's called a cruncher booby. So this is this can be fished in the top, very much like in a merger on a lake. You can pop it on the surface and then fish it. What's called a washing line is you put this on the called the point. So if I have a long leader, this is my first fly and two small flies, and I just cast that out and just let it fall through the layers. This will hold it up like a washing line and just let it, it fall. Sounds like something you'd see in the creek to snag salmon. A washing line full of flies. Yeah. Yeah, it, exactly. But take that and take it to the lakes above weed beds, anywhere. So you think of rainbow trout feed horizontally, uh, where browns feed vertically. Rainbows are constantly looking. So if you get that right level, and the key with a washing line is to just slowly go through the layers. So, but you're you're trying to find put three flies at the same layer. Uh, a cruncher booby still is one of my favorite patterns to ever do that. It's very natural. It looks like a really natural fly falling through. And if you put a couple of pheasant tails in front of it, you can have just a deadly buzzer presentation. So uh, don't, as, a, as the kids would say, don't sleep on the pheasant tail when it comes to lakes. I think people always think river. Um, so that lineup right there, still, these have been around for forever, uh, just not as popular in Canada. So that's my first, uh, from an essential pattern, multiple variations of a pheasant tail for the lakes. Um, and interrupt me anytime. And then the other one is when it comes to rivers, uh, I think we all know a beadhead pheasant tail. There's kind of the, the original version over here. Um, pause on that one for a second. But I, I, like a beadhead, whether it's a jig hook or not, is, is deadly. I would do natural versions. And the, you know these are called Frenchies. They put little hot spots behind it um, so you can get a lot out of a simple pheasant tail pattern with with or without a call or without or without a hot spot is the best river fly probably ever created you're crazy not to fish them if you're not right now uh, and they, you know fish dead drift is just absolutely deadly um, the the original one like this without weight um, i really like to fish that one as an emerger and so you just dust up the the, the you know the old if you don't know the old the, the kind of the old way of tying pheasant tail there's those pheasant tail flies you pull through and pull the wing over and it, they kind of splay out to the sides a couple things when you fish it as a nymph it'll wobble um but what's really cool about that one in my opinion is you got, if fish are taking mayfly kind of in the surface right in the film don't forget about like just take your dust or gink or whatever and just gink up the just gink up these feathers and a bit on the top and it'll sit right in the film and it's just deadly. You can even pull it, you can get away with a spinner uh, as well with one of these. So like, you know, cause you got the sides splayed out, you could call it a cripple, call it whatever you want. But a fish are feeding in the film, it's absolutely deadly. You can, you can flow, they float in there pretty good. And if you tie them on a dry fly hook, they'll sit right in the film. Um, this is not a pheasant tail, if, for those paying attention. That is a bayet and a, some stupid tail the person put on the end here. Um, but this, I may pause, this may be the single greatest dry fly that exists in the world. You're going to yell at me about an Adams. You can yell at me about an L. caracatus. You can yell at me about a bunch of stuff. It's called a plume tip. It was invented by a guy named Jeremy Lucas. Uh, he's also British. Uh, he's a big river, very technical river angler over there. Um, his original one was tied with heron. So if you want to go like get yourself in trouble with the wild, if <laughs> you know, go get some heron earl, but he also, they substitute in pheasant tail. So I chose this picture for a couple of reasons. So if you, you, you got to have this dry fly in your box, if you fish trout, unacceptable, if you don't, um, the way you tie it is it's just that we were talking about CDC. It's the, it's the tips of about two or three feathers. So the plume tip. The secret of this fly is the angle, and this is why I took this picture, is a lot of people tie them like a shuttlecock and it comes straight out here so the fly would sit vertically. The, the real, you want that 45 degree angle. So the way you tie this fly is you, you tie in your CDC first, two or three, um, lat, tie it down here, 
come back down here, tie in your pheasant tail, no tail. I don't know what's going on here. Just wrap it up here, snip it, take a little bit of leftover CDC, dub it, and then bring your thread to the front and use enough thread wraps to get that nice angle. That fly, I would tie it from a six, yeah, you can make it maybe a 14 at the biggest, 14 down to a 20 or 22. Um, Jeremy Lucas it, it will use this for kind of mid, these are your sippers. This is your flat pools. It's not a fast water pattern at all, but your, your tail outs, your anytime there's a slick, anytime you see a fish with those real subtle rise where you know they're eating a midge or you know they're eating something, they don't have to work hard for it. Um, It'll literally almost like, you know, all he did and famously is he'll start at a 16. Nope. Go to an 18. Nope. 20. One of them will catch it. He only fishes these in the most technical flat water. Like if you were going to really technical flat water, this is the fly you want. And you can like people mess around with it with other stuff. Just tie it with a pheasant tail. It's absolutely deadly. They're just the key when you're fishing in the, this fly is you got to stay way back, long leaders, really you want, it's very delicate presentation so we're not doing a dry fly discussion but this is where if you're fishing spanish techniques or at least fine and far off this is your flat water gee those i can't catch a trout and i go through the plume tip i'm just going home but you won't you'll they'll eat it they just just keep scaling it down that makes sense the plume tip Jeremy Lucas. And then, yeah, this is a pheasant. This is another jig fly. Uh, it's got a collar of CDC. So we were talking about getting some crappy CDC. There's another way the French tie it a lot is with um, just hare's ear, like really uh, your, or um, it's a, is it a fox or so. anything that's like you know, a, um, kind of a bard or, you know, like your hare's ear would be perfect behind there. You want a collar of it. And so this is a, it's a lot different than this fly over here. And the fact that this one's very streamlined, this one will sink very, very fast. This one catches a lot more water. And when we're fishing the world championship with Fr at France, our French guy, who's three-time French champion, he was getting mad at us for fishing this one. We thought he was mad at us because we're fishing a pheasant tail. But he said, and he was, it was very interesting, when you're into the kind of shallow, riffly water, always put a collared, like a hackled version of it because it rolls over the rocks and it doesn't hang up. And it was crazy. Same fly, this one was hanging up every time, switched to this and it just drifted over those rocks. That little bit of hackle made all the difference. So we also thought they're putting the hackle in for movement. They really use the hackle when you wanna keep a fly just a little bit off the bottom. So it's not, this is more in your your shallow riffles, your your water where you're, you can see the bottom. These are better in, in deeper water. So there's a the pheasant tail, number one. You could live off this little and do pretty good. So any questions on what I got, eight variations of a pheasant tail? They're all tied with the one one or two materials, which is right up my alley, uh, minus what, the ribbing. What's the feather on the front of the cruncher? This? Yeah. They 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 use badger. And they just like the dark. But that's a, that's it, a saddle hackle? Saddle hackle, whatever. Choose your favorite color. Um, and look, if you look up crunchers, there's one called the cut, cutthroat cruncher. So they put a red, a little bit of red behind it. That's my favorite one. This is a original. It was also deadly. The way Ian tied his, or the, I have a bunch of pheasant tails by him, and it's they've got the, like he splits it and then does the thorax, but the legs are like stubby. Like uh, it looks like they're um, that kind of thing from the cruncher. No, I think it's like the cruncher, or I don't know. Yeah, he died, and then he he loved cove pheasant tails too. Like, I don't know if you have those, but he loved. He, he, and he, one, he, one variation he really liked was a black one um, with peacock curl instead of the rabbit here. Okay, yeah, get tons he of loved, those. That was one of his favorite flies. So, um, but it's because he loved midges more than trout, maybe. Uh, so, it, <laughs> uh, so, uh, but it's a deadly midge. It's like. To this day, it's just not popular here. Uh, I know Ian tried to make it popular, but it, it, you can use it as a river nymph, but it's a midge. Uh, they tie them all the way up to size eights, by the way, for big midges, but they're deadly. And, and this, I, I got to leave you. Like, if you fish flat water, have plume tips all day. Don't get hung up on the hair and hurl. Just, just pheasant tail, angle it. The other one you can do is a thread body too, but it's a deadly, deadly pattern. It's only good for flat, flattish water though. It's a real technical, technical. Could you use snowshoe rabbit there for the... You could, you could, for sure. 
Um, maybe I love snowshoe rabbits that'll float stuff. Um, I would just tie it in a usual version and have it like the, I would do the whole body, but, uh, you could use it for sure. But the CDC, there's something about it when it looks up, it's just nice. Like, but it, again, it's not a, that thing would be the world's worst fly in fast water, but you put that in slick water when it's technical and just fine tip it. And they, like the Zagreb, they don't, if they refuse it, just go a size smaller, you know, 16, 18, 20, you'd probably get most difficult trout you could catch for sure. For sure. Not my fly. But, Do you but, use different colors of pheasant tail and dyed tails? Only on the cove. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Just the cove. I like the black. I lied. I'll use the black here too for the, for that. I'll do it for, cause it's a midge to me. It's pretty good. You know, whether or not it makes a difference at all. No idea. Um, I know the Spanish guys in Spain were like, they had to be chocolate brown or they didn't like it, but and we're like, yeah, I don't know. Like it's pheasant tail gets wet, but what do I know? Uh, but, and, and black for the Frenchies sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You can do black. You can do black on a Frenchie too, because it's just a zebra midge, you know, with a little bit of oomph, you know. So black, black would be the would be a good one. Uh, there are people who really like olive for crunchers too. Like get, you'll see olive crunchers. I mean, uh, yeah. claret, claret comes up in the still water. They like it too. But um, I mean, I go choose your own adventure. I, most of mine are are just pheasant tail color because I fish a pheasant. I just do this, but. But yeah, you can you can you can play with a lot of variations of each of these styles. But there is a back to that, not to overdo it, that just same pattern, one with hackle-ish stuff, one without, big difference, one with hotspot, one without. Same fly, just the subtle variations. You can tie them quick and they fish differently. That's the key, and fish love them, especially when they're eating mayflies or midges. Number two. I thought it was adorable. Get it? Hair's ear? No? Nobody? Nobody on the hair's ear? I thought. Mm -hmm. like, my Most people look at that as cute. We look at it as, oh, it's pretty barred. You know, not bad. Pretty good hackle. Like, you know, you get pretty good dubbing out of that guy. You would look um, even cuter if he was just a skinned face on the oh, table. I, gave a, I traumatized a group of kids when I was had him go through my flight. They found the bunny faces. And that was not good. I forgot about that. Like, it's like you're at Texas Chainsaw Massacre and you're like, what is this? Oh, I have lamps made out of that stuff. Don't worry. Um, yeah, so here's ear number two, kind of your fun, the ones you guys all know. But just for some people, I always think of it as I, if they're on caddis, I go here's ear. Like, in my mind, I'm not saying it's right. Mayfly midges, that's my pheasant. I get a lot of people ask me, how do you choose between two of the greatest flies of all time? That's how I do it. They're on scuds, sow bugs, caddis, I'm throwing a here's ear. <clears throat> Uh, that's why if you're fishing two flies, a hare's ear and a pheasant tail, like, come on, we got a party. Uh, they're, they, the hare's ear also performs very well. It's almost like there's trout in ri in rivers and lakes. Um, so it does really, really well. And what I like about hare's ear, it's really easy to tie. It's durable. It's easy peasy. Once you learn how to dub, it's pretty, pretty good. So um, here's a couple, just things you may or may not know. So um those who spend time in Pennsylvania, the old waltz worm, deadly, my kind of fly, just dubbed on a hook, bead or no bead, no problem. It'll, I mean, technical trout waters, it does amazing. It looks like uh, everything I said, a cat, it's a but where the variation to me in this pattern comes from the bead color. So don't be afraid to play with bead colors. Gold for, for me when it's sunny, a pink, uh, like that soft pink bead is kind of a general all-purpose kind of subtle. You have your coppers, your blacks, you don't have to go overboard, but have a couple. The very There's a big difference with the kind of glint you get off it. Those who don't know this fly, most people do. There's one called the sexy waltz where they'll, they will they put a, a pearl ribbing through it. If you want to party fly, as they would say in, the US, in, uh, in Europe. But that just dubbed on a hook is deadly. And I didn't put a picture of a fly I love called the no CM that Ian James and I love fishing, which was we take, we took this and we shrunk it to just behind the bead. So all you have is a bead and dubbing and a hook. And if you get also for steelhead, if they get technical, you can catch them. And I kid you not, I had a client on the big head years ago. I said, you fish them behind pinners, just throw like a nothing little no see them on. And he was cleaning up behind him in one of those clear days because they'd seen enough row to last them a lifetime. And they just saw a little they're tired of the pocket row, pocket row. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, I completely agree. And, and 
hands down, one of my favorite go tos to no see him for Steelhead. Yeah, they love it. I don't know why. They just oh, do. With a black matte bead, it was insane. Yeah, black matte and what? One pinch of dubbing behind and just a bare hook, right? That's yeah. it. Or a dull pink, same yep. thing. Yep. Yeah, the and the that, Steelhead aren't beating the just another trout allegations. What's they that? They are. The steelhead aren't beating the I'm yeah, just no, they're, another they're trout, just trout allegations. Yeah. And they eat a lot of midges. But uh, that no CM fly. So, I mean, really simple, durable. We were making jokes about ammunition. You're not chasing this one. You put it in the lock. You're like, whatever, I can tie that. How many could you tie in 20 minutes? How many could you tie in an hour? One drunken, whatever, game changer? I could have like a lifetime supply of these flies. It's one of my um, favorites to tie because it's so complicated. Oh, it's my, it's, this is how, <laughs> this is what I can do. Um, so this, this fly, um, I know there's a, I'm going to use some profane, it's called a shit fly. Um, and, uh, oh, I got Moro's attention. Hey, you like that? Uh, I looked up from the vice when I said shit fly. Um, so I'll tell you a story about the shit fly. So I had to, uh, I had to know which one you're pointing to. <laughs> this is the shit fly, right? So, um, Interesting. So, um, so David Arkai, I think Moro, Marco, you spent time in them. He's uh, one of the top anglers in the world, like multiple world champions. He's really good. Um, so he was our coach in Ireland, and we were practicing on lakes. And there were these like tr we've all seen them, and if you've seen them in lakes, those trout they're cruising around, and they're like in pot for some reason, damn near impossible to catch. And then they start rising to nothing, and they're like. I should have plume tipped him, but I didn't. Uh, but uh, so he, we, nobody could catch one. And he's like, I can catch because his English was not good. I'm like, we're like, you can catch that? And he's like, yep. And he first cast. And, him. and I can catch it. Yeah. You can catch it now. Ship I fly. I can catch it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what he does. I can catch. So what like what they found was this is just hair's ear dubbed on a hook, but spiky. And if you really want to be cute, you can mix in a little bit of CDC. Um, and then I, uh, there's a guy named Tom Jarman, who's the top rod in Australia. He was fishing with a French team and then he's coming back raving around this fly. So it's, it's a really technical fly rivers or lakes, but it's flat water. It doesn't, it's an emerger kind of thing, but man, you put that powder on this thing and just float it in the film, various sizes, like from an 18 up to a 14, they just eat it. There's just, I think there's just something really natural about how it sits in the film. There's nothing to it. Uh, you know, to quote Pat Weiss out of Pennsylvania, there's nothing for it to refuse. Um, that simple fly just, again, it doesn't float super well. It's got to be flat. Don't forget about this one. And, you know, uh, there's some people who will not be happy I'm releasing that. That is a really good back pocket like i can you know if in doubt in case of emergency break glass this would be behind it along with that plume tip for technical trip ian quick question yeah that, that fly seems to have kind of a bluey kind of color which seems different than the other flies here can you comment on that i have no idea i just took a picture of one i think it's like that to me is what it looks like when i put white powder on it i wouldn't worry too much about it like like to quote them, it's the shit fly. It's just, it's just a, you just want to, you want a bushy fly, brush it out um, with, with not just guard hairs, but the under fur and a little bit of CDC if you want to be cute. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. That's just the dubbing they used. And sorry, and what, you, is, the, you, what sorry. is the material for the dubbing if you're not using CDC again? Just, no, just hairs here. Just all hairs here. Oh, simple fly. Simple fly, but just use, if you're plucking it yourself, just have that mix of, under fur and like don't do it all guard hairs it's too bushy like you need it bushy but with softness to it when you brush it out just so it'll hold the powder um i throw like a little pinch of cdc like for just for i don't know why that's not necessary cdc uh, to hold some air bubbles yeah it doesn't matter because you go ahead yeah it, 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 but in, where, where, where you can find a good supply of that uh, material is in a bunny nest if you find a bunny nest on your property, it's got the guard hairs on it. It's got the uh, the, okay. the fine dubbing all mixed in. So you just you just wrap the whole thing on a, on a hook, just okay. a bunny nest hmm. in the spring. Nice. Ian, would you fish this both in lakes and rivers? Yep. Cool. Yeah, but it's it's deadly for lakes with difficult trout for sure. In the river, I'm more likely to throw the plume tip first because it's the same kind. They're like. They're in the same 
category, like the sipping pain in the ass. I don't know how to catch a trout. That's the only two flies I'll try. Maybe in a tiny little left fly, but if these two won't catch it, it, it there's something wrong. So like they'll eat one of those two. As proven by the two best teams, Spain and France, this is one of their secret little flies. 100% for difficult trout. Easy, simple, but you got to have good powder. Like it's not, don't gink it. It'll sink powder. You know, the, the Bogota special, you know. <laughs> um, uh, and then I, I'm not doing this. I'm kind of going over here. Um, the other one, like the, I do one with, I just, instead of wrapping it down the hook, I, I just put green kind of blob fritz or some type of green fritz out of the end. This like case caddises can be really complex. My old mentor, Ian James, loved case caddises. He made them, I think, really complex. Uh, my my zombie... favorite was the model train sand. Yeah, like that one with the... Yeah, so <laughs> zombie Ian James is going to go kind of attack me for... Uh, like, that's too much work. Just just do a waltz worm and stick a green ass on it. Um, that is a deadly fly. <laughs> they see case... Like, don't overthink a case caddis. And you can do it various sizes. The other one, you can put lead underneath it. But I like this with a dull bead. Um, I don't care what the green is. I do sometimes fritz at the back. Sometimes I wrap it, whatever. It looks like a case caddis. It's super easy. And it's a total, you fish it like a total dead drift. Like case, case caddises don't emerge. They don't swing up. I mean, the fish aren't going to be that picky about it anyways, but it's a great dead drift fly. It's a great low light fly with that green. But I love it when the light's a little low, you know, I put it on. Absolutely killer. Um, and then another version, this is like the fly for those who aren't in the know. It's called a thread nymph. For those who, uh, get, like, this is about one of about 100 versions from the checks. It's like the cool, the cool in fly for the last 10, 15 years that every competition guy used to keep quiet. Some guys use CDC for the tail of the collar, but the original one is, is uh, partridge. Um, you dub it with... Um, and you dub it quite bushy with hair's ear. You wrap it with either globe, like a, a bright orange, glow bright five or four, or a hot pink. So there's a, a hot pink or a hot orange rib. And then you wrap it again with um, partridge and then throw a little bit of ice dub in the front. That fly, you can swing it. You can do whatever the hell you want with it. That fly is absolutely deadly. I have no idea why. I don't know if it could glow from the orange. You take the orange thread or off, not as good. It's just like a normal air's ear. That's a variation I had to put in here. It's a wicked fly for swinging too because of the hackles. Um, and it rolls over the boulders, kind of like that other one. It's a good fly to kind of fish in, in, in rocky water. Really, really, really good. And then another ver kind of a variation of it down here, kind of dialed down where you see that this is a Spanish version of it. They kind of put a hot collar on it. But it's the same kind of idea. But this one is just absolutely, like if you look up Red Nymph, Lubos Rocha, I think, you know, is selling them on Fulling Mill now. But this is a great fly. And there's about 100 different versions of it. Just choose one and uh, you got to have it in your collection, or in my opinion. And then the last two is uh, dry flies. So the only three dry flies I fish are really, maybe a couple more, but a plume tip in slow water. Uh, a hare's ear dry fly was new to me, to be honest. This came from the Spanish as well. Um, that's a hare's ear tail, hare's ear body, to stick a CDC wing. You don't like a CDC wing, put a Comparadon, I don't care, whatever. Um, but the hare's ear dry fly, it was John Garrick's favorite fly. So, like, you know, he's about a thousand and caught uh, trout all over the world. I should have paid more attention when in his book he said it was one of his favorite flies. It is the only, like like mayfly you need almost like so uh don't forget about a hare's ear and a mayfly and then same version in a caddis so this is a fancy one where it's uh, we've uh put a little bit it's just an f fly with a little bit uh oomph uh so you, we've just hackled the front end but there's hare's ear under there too so same body just different caddis wing vertical wing dry flies done so people get really worked up about dry flies They'll eat a hare's ear like 95% of the time. Like, I don't care if they're on Hendrickson's or Sulphur's or whatever's. Just have a hare's ear and throw it out. It's all the one you need. Now, the orange, it's, it's a glow bright that you put on the top of the fly. So you just, when you're done tying the fly, you kind of take a couple and you, you tie it and pull it back and then snip it so you can see the dry fly. 
It's a cider. Yeah. Ian, quick question. When I'm fishing for little brookies, I hate CDC for dry flies because they keep getting beating beaten up yeah. and then you've you're always around with CDC. Totally. How do you think about that? Like, I love that kind of a fly, but I I can't deal with the maintenance. And you of all people would appreciate that. I do. I do appreciate that. And so, first of all, I just stopped fishing for brook trout. No, I'm just <laughs> 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 no. So there, 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 so the value of CDC is kind of the presentation of it. Um, I I would say there's two things: is a high quality powder for sure. So find that not all powders created equal. Um, I love making like cocaine jokes with that stuff, so I'll try not to. But um, there's a couple like the, the Arcai stuff from Smart Angling. The the Spanish guy, he he takes it very seriously. His is really good. Loon is pretty good. Uh, you get a high quality powder because you should be able to take the seat, like take it, dunk it in the water, and you just dip your finger in and you just rub it on the top really fast. So you just dunk it and just kind of rub all the. So it's not the maintenance gets better, but it's a it is around. For sure. So if I'm catching a high volume of fish, I'll have that exact same fly with a deer hair or something like that. So like Moro ties a fly I love that's a deer hair fly. Like if I'm catching a lot of fish, like to that frequency, I'll just try it now. If I stop catching, no. And the other one, snowshoe hair. It's more durable. It floats. You know, like essentially, like the way I think of it, like the fly did not, not have as a usual. People forget about the usual. Usual is a damn good fly. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. really good. Uh, so that's just a Spanish version of that usual. Like, you know, you make that a snowshoe body, sn snowshoe here and a snowshoe up here. That's what I would swap in if you want. Like if I was catching a high volume, nah, snowshoes are going to do the same thing. And I, I'm going to, I won't be uh, getting pissed <clears throat> off all the time. So I, yeah, I find, I... yeah, CDC is a good medium catch rate of flies versus if you're just pounding fish, I take it off because it's, you, you're right. The maintenance is too high, but the maintenance is take the fly, dip it to get the fish crap off. You don't need to do this elastic band thing. I've got to see people do, don't do any of that. Just get a really high quality power, not with a brush. Put your pinky in, pinky in only because your hands will get too dry and just rub that wing. And a good quality CDC will pop up pretty fast. So that's how long it takes. Dunk, you know, maybe one more, click, and you're back out. So it's not that bad, but it is annoying after a bunch of fish. So a uh, quick comment. Uh, the hairs are dry. Um, my mentor on the on the uh, credit back in the nineties had a hairs ear dry that was basically a traditional hackle, but cat scale style with the um, wood duck uh, lemon wood duck wing, and that was basically all he fished was that hairs ear body. Uh, now I know you know cat scales whatever, right? Maybe out of style or whatever but uh uh that hair's ear i mean <laughs> it was and he guided on the river and he fished it almost every day lived in brimstone and that was well, his go-to size 16 on the credit. i had the moment like what am i an idiot like why didn't i put hair's ear on a mayfly i did it on a caddis but nope I don't know. and again why why, why was i root fool around the tail just grab some hair like it's super fast it's and it's just a usual. Fast. When you really look at it, it's just like a usual. And a usual, again, is a great fly because, I mean, it, the floatability, the durability. <clears throat> and it's simple, right? Yeah. And <clears> simple <throat> and, te and technical trout will eat it. Any trout, yeah. like, it's just a real, like, you, it, it, now if I'm going to fish a mayfly, just grab it. Done. Yeah. And, but it's ironic because I'm, I'm going to use my pheasant tail for the nymph. So that's a little crazy. So right. it's funny, when I was out west last September with Evo and when Bertram came, yeah, same yep. thing. That that was, I think, one of the only dries he fished. Yeah, and he's what? Why about, like, why why bother? Right, like that. That's kind of what it comes down to. You get you figure out that the fly doesn't. I've let, I've let people. He's two time world champion, Bertrand. This guy's talking about him from France and Jeremy. I'm yeah. like, yeah, just let people better than me figure do all the work, and then just oh, you know, they, oh. they've already whittled it down. Um, right. So now I'm, I'm focusing on my technique and the presentation, not the fly. And then so, you know, so that, you know, we hear that a million times, but these are just flies you can have. They're not all going to work all the time, but they're high confidence flies. And, you know, so if I was like, okay, they're not eating a mayfly, they're not eating a caddis, hit them with a shit fly, bloom tip. I suck. I'm not catching that fish. It's not a fly issue. It's me. I'm a problem. I am the problem in this situation. <laughs> they, like one of those will crack the nut for sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. So and, I just try and... to simplify the fly choice, have a much more, have different sizes and a couple variations and then worry about, okay, they're eating mayflies, which size, what's my presentation? And there you're, I find you catch more fish. Um, that, uh, that Lubosch thread jig nymph is stupid. Spectacular. Yeah. It, it was like, it was like, this is the one where 10 years ago, like, it, yeah. it, like it was closely guarded secret. Yeah. Not anymore. And it's just a good all, I don't know why it's a good all rounder. And that's but, the OG. Uh, that's the OG. Some people like CDC is the invoke one, but no. a lot of the check guys still use the OG. So I, point. um, yeah, all my, Probably my five last biggest browns are on that on that yeah. one fly. Yeah, it'll work. Yeah, yeah. but it works really with good. the with the partridge. Yeah, well, like this one. Right? Yeah, I only fish with the partridge. Yeah. Deadly. And I like it. It's a great wet fly. You can swing it as a wet, right? So yeah. Um, yeah, crazy effective. And I don't really know why it's that rib. It's got to be. There's no other because this is I guess if I look at it as this just morphed into that. That's a really fancy version of that, but I don't know. And the check guys type bushy, they brush it all out. It's like really clumpy and they like it. Yeah. They like like a there's a fly called a bird's nest or something like that, like bushy. You know? All right. And number three, we we'll talk a lot about Spain, the Pertagon, right? So these have been really like the hot ticket in town, but they really do offer you something the other ones don't and then so it was invented in spain and and you know that marco in asturias it was invented um on the polonia uh if you wanted to know Ian, uh, are you telling me uh there's a chance my entire bottle of desiccin could be step on low qual yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Ian? just snort it twice and tell me what if it's high grade or not <laughs> i'm going around don't, telling all my don't buddies do it, don't got, do it don't I'm do telling it. all my buddies they have step on now it's so yeah, funny yeah. <laughs> um so it was called it, it, pertagon is spanish for pellet it was really invented uh to get small flies down in faster water um and it, it, it what's it interesting and i never uh, it was pointed out to me by a spanish guy is it actually drifts slower than a pheasant tail or a hare's ear so they they it it, it does because it doesn't have any water resistance it goes down really fast and and it will drift a little bit slower. Um, but it, it, the benefit of it is it drops fast. The downside is it drops fast. And yeah, it's an epoxy buzzer with a bead. Um, Ian James was tying epoxy flies for forever. This is not a new concept. But there, there, one thing that really does differentiate a Pertagon is this, whether you use black paint or a marker or whatever, this wing case in many scenarios, I do think they trigger in on the wing case. So I wasn't sold on the wing case thing. Uh, it does make a difference on these. And they're hugely durable. They're going to last as long as they can until you lose it. Um, there's a couple of, of good ones. Um, this one, uh, there's one called a Culi Roja, which is Spanish for red ass. And this one's called a Fangarista, which has got, it's just a black body with either red holographic or an orange butt or a red butt. Yep, it looks like a red tag. It's Pertagon red tag. That fly with a silver bead and a copper bead, I would have no, I would have very limited confidence hitting a river without it. It'll work at any time. There's any kind of tannic colored water. It's absolutely deadly. Um, this fly over here is called a Gasolina. It's very popular right now. Um, it's been around. It looks like there, there's bunch of different ways to tie it there's lots of videos on it the original one is hens 233 wrapped with hens 45 but you can buy little strips and a bunch of stuff the key being um you know you only need a copper bead on a gasolina that is a brown trout fly it's a brown trout catching machine i don't know if it's the glint on it or whatever the hell it, you know they, it was called gasolina because it looks like fuel or gasoline in a puddle that kind of coppery green it's absolutely deadly. Um, so pick your favorite Pertagons, uh, but just have one that's kind of light, you know, for your um, uh, simple rule is match the color of the bottom. So if you go to a river and there's really light, bold, like boulders that are light, freestone, something like that, grab a light colored Pertagon. So have a couple light ones. There's about 10 billion different patterns you can choose from. Um, for sure, have a Gasolina and a Coolie Roja. 
and then have your variations in between. Would those uh, copper and black ones be the best for like the grand colored water? The, the, this one and this one. So yeah. the, the gasolina and a Roja are the only two flies you need for the grand for a Pertigo. And I would actually throw it, you could throw it in a Rainbow Warrior, like the Lance Egan's fly or something like that as a Pertigon if you want. But these two, yeah. Yeah, out of all those epoxy brought. buzzers, uh, I think like the coppery, blacky ones are like the most abundant yeah. in the boxes. It, yeah, and I mean, <clears> like, <throat> this if it's a dark day or, I mean, actually, it doesn't even matter. The Cooley Roja, this one, is so good. It's a, like, it's so good. Uh, like, it just, yeah, like, yeah, like, if you, like, you have, it's a must have, like, for, for trout anglers. It's nothing. Uh, for trout fishing, it is absolutely deadly. The gasolina have a version yet you're comfortable with, and then something light in the middle. Pick your favorite. They're they're kind of fun to tie. They last forever, um, but you can see they're pretty big on the wing cases. They're pretty big wing cases. Of course, you don't need a wing case. Somebody said like why on the black one? Well, the flies black. Uh, this will replace. I I rarely fish zebra midges anymore just because this kind of replaced it. But um, they 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 sink really really fast. You can fish them really really small, and you'll use lighter beads. The only thing is don't overweight these flies. They sink really really fast so a lot of 2.5 mil beads um some 2.3 like anything over a three mil bead the thing is a bomb like so really scale back um your weights because they sink really really fast they're much better for fast water um yeah like i i like these ones here are, are well i don't know which ones i like hannock uh 230 um still water hooks um it, that's my favorite like you want a you just want you don't i don't like them in jig hooks you notice these aren't tied in jig hooks uh i like a bigger gate here um you can tie them if you wanted to on jigs but i like that 230 hook uh, and they're also great for dry dropper um so they're one of the best flies for dry dropper you fish really really light like 2.5 mil 2.3 mil little 18s little whatever if you put it under a dry fly um they sink quickly but you can do really really lightweight so you can get into those little pockets fast with these things so if you're in pocket water a dry dropper with a little pertagon underneath it is absolutely deadly so you come back you know and you don't have to be fancy come back throw one of these on you don't need some crazy l care thing just put this on with a little pertagon underneath it and you can hold it in those little pockets and just crush it in a little right i mean marco you were fishing in spain with like the best guys in the world same thing right uh, that was one of my takeaways was a 2.3, 2.5 under a dry pocket water is a whole new game now for me with that setup. Yeah. It's, it's not insane. clunky. It's light. It's fun to fish. Like, it, oh, it's, it's it was a blast. It, it casts really easy. It's yeah. fun. Like you're like, holy shit. I don't care if you're Euro nymphing or fishing reg regular fishing, whatever. Just you can stick this on. <laughs> like it, these are great dropper patterns. Just don't overweight them. I see people yeah, that was, that was, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Unless you're in New Zealand and you have to get down in like the world's fastest water. Yeah, the flip would be if you need a bomb, if you do a heavily weighted Pertagon, that thing's a bomb. Like they sink so fast, but they're deadly patterns. They're just so good. But to, I, we don't really fish them big. 14's like the biggest. It They really come into their own. 16's, 18's are just the money, like the money size for these things. Ian, yeah, thank this? you. Sorry, go Thank ahead. you for that. You you kind of answered one of the questions I had. How do you fish it if you don't want a Euro nymph? So clearly, if you can fish two flies, you're away. What happens if you're in a stretch of water, you can't fish two flies, and you don't want a Euro nymph? How would you think about just that? How you don't like under a, just use a little yarn indicator or something like that, or like a little 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 like a little suspender system. Yeah, yeah, yep. Like I, I like the New Zealand or a little yarn. What's a Dorsey indicator with a little. Like I would have no trouble putting one of these under a really like a again you can put a light bead that's the secret a two point five mil so it's not clunky you need nothing to hold the damn thing up and if you really want to be old school just fish it upstream and watch your fly line as you're like gink your fly line and keep up with it as it comes forward and watch for the line to jump so just fish fish upstream uh, just gink the hell out of your fly line uh, not too long of a leader if you're in riffles and stuff and just Keep up with your line. So if your rod, this is my rod, just never let the line coming off my rod get past 90 degrees. If it, the line starts to do this, you're not keeping up with it. If you go like this, you're going too fast. Just keep it coming off at 90 degrees. 
and that gives enough you'll just see the line jump and then you because you won't really hang up because they're light but they're people get confused it's just naturally rolling down there the number one mistake is every overweight serpentagons these don't have any hackle these things are bullets man they're pellets you know light light with the vertigo can you tell us that hannock hook again the number 230 230 thank you yeah, yeah. is hey, this yeah, one of those what? ones sorry go ahead so, no go ahead Bryce. is this one of those ones where uh you'll you'll do the jig bead on the standard 230 and invert it that way or yeah i'm, I'm right is it still a marco i mean 230 is the still water yeah right? Yeah. 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 So I just don't, I like, I don't, you can tie a uh, Pertagon on a jig hook, have at her. You just, I find you don't need to. Uh, I think it naturally turns over anyways. So, uh, and uh, yeah, if you offset that bead the way you've shown us in, yeah. in the past in other videos, videos, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it works perfect. And, and again, it, I don't even know, like the French guys don't even care this, but the, and the Czech guys are, they don't like it. In, like they just fish them like that. Uh, they don't hang up that much. They only will if you overweight them. That's the problem. That's the mistake. Because what we're trying to do is get them down to that little cushion of water, wherever it is, but not so heavy it pushes through that cushion at the bottom. So it'll just boom, and it won't. It just re and they're really nice under indicators. So if you like suspender systems, kind of regular nymphing, they're awesome because they don't. They get down right away and they don't drag right. So they're not catching as much. So if you're fishing a bobber. And here's my line, and this is my fly. The problem, what happens is in faster water, you chuck that out, the bobber grabs the fast water, and it starts to pull this, this up right away before it can get down. So we're mending. Good news is with this, it goes right down, and it gets re down there really, really fast. So it, it kind of grabs underneath. The only downside is they're, they're really shitty in the wind um, because they come out of the water as fast as they go in. They don't anchor. They're a terrible anchor system. So if you're trying to in the wind, if you're euro nymphing or something, they're they're terrible. They're not. But for people who don't euro nymph, it doesn't really matter. But if you're euro nymphing, they're the world's worst anchor pattern because they Ian, pull out of the uh, water. What, what, would you have an indicator on there? The, the challenge is though that the top water often moves a lot faster than the bottom yep. water. So while they'll yep. sink quick, you know, six feet into your drag, the yep. top water has already moved way farther downstream than the bottom. So you, you almost have yep. to check your indicator, don't you? Yeah, I would. I wouldn't even fish an indicator. I'd take it right off and just hold it and high stick it through. Um, but if it, but it, uh, if you are fishing an indicator, it's it's still going to give you a better shot. It's going to get down faster. You're you're damn right. It's just going to give you a little bit of a chance before because your other one it gets down and you get about this much of a drift before you can mend. And then, but I don't like indicators in fast water for that very reason. I so so it's so it seems to me if you've taken the indicator off, you're just half a step away from your own thing then. Yeah. Well, it, you know, or whatever you want to call it in fast water, because the conditions force you to do it, like, to be honest, or that's what I mean. If you're going to fish an indicator in fast water, because some people love it, um, we're talking, it must be really, really fast. It, it will cut down through there pretty yeah. good. Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, the only downside to your point, though, it's not going to anchor, right? So if it's really fast water, the indicator will pull it up. Yeah. But if it's that medium fast water... I know that's a really vague term to say medium fast water, but that medium fast water, it's perfect under an indicator. And, but, and I can attest, difficult steelhead, love them. Oh yeah, that was a, a, a lesson learned this weekend out of desperation. Said, let me try this. It's just because it probably gets down to them, and it drifts and a that, little bit. That was yeah. Ian, That was exactly why. No, yeah. and it drifts slower. That, that yeah. I remember that too. Like they like them in tough conditions because the hairs here in a pheasant tail, while it will get it take longer to get down and it may anchor more, um, it it still catches water even on that cushion. The, the Pertagons fish really slow. Yeah, and I think that was the ticket. Yeah, that it, it fished slow. Yeah, that's a Pertagon. And then what could he possibly have next? Oh, sorry, one more question. Oh, oh, I was about to hit the trigger there, Marco. Flandestina versus Cuya Rosa. Any, what's the difference? I like to hear your Spanish again. Can you please say that again? Cuya Rosa. <laughs> Roja. <laughs> yeah, the Cuya Roja and the Fangorista, whatever they call it. Oh, yeah, Flang uh, Flandestina, uh, I think. Uh, the the Cuya Roja has glow bright four or five as the ass. Okay. The part of the ass. Uh, this one, the other one, Fang or Easter, whatever they call it, uh, Falanista is the proper term I just call it. Uh, uh, oh, the Falanista okay. has, has a red holographic ass. Okay, fair enough. But, I thought it was so close that it didn't deserve its own name, but 
Yeah, but uh, like, but like I've learned for some reason, sometimes a red, holog a ho red holographic being a little less intrusive than the other one, but now we're just splitting hairs. Pick Got one it. with a red ass and go have at it. But the Kuli Roa, the one with the glow bright, is probably the best. Hey, Ian, question on these. Do you, do you, does the resin matter or can you just put down something that's red and then cover it in like a glue or a lacquer or something? Yeah, you could, you could do it with like, um, like different ways of a pot. So Marco was spending time over in Spain and he was really, now he's come back can, like on the UV epoxies can have different colors, whatever's yeah. the most clear, like you could Sally Hansen these. For sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just, you, like, I, I, I mean, I don't have resin right now, but I have other clear glue. Yeah, yeah same. Like, anything. Just find, yeah. just find one that is the most clear when it dries. I don't, okay. The, the, the process. Um, what there are some resins like Marco took it to like extreme, but uh, that are aren't that clear. They kind of color up. And yeah. you'll find well, it was, it was try, trying to match, especially when you're tying light colored pertagons, D. Yep. Yeah, I was racking my head against the wall, saying, "Why are mine not coming out the same as yeah. Spanish?" Yeah, Spanish and, and ours was was driving us nuts. Was the for the Cooley Roja? So if you know what glow bright number five is, it kind of looks like fire orange. It's like that. Yeah, yeah, you know that color. And we're like, mine are all dull. Like the the black looked amazing because it's black thread with a. Mm -hmm. But we're like, why is my I, I want the orange pop right? Like, but I wanted mm -hmm. epoxied, and it was the yeah. So. You can do whatever system you have. Like I was using Solares, but now Marco's convinced me it's no good. But um, <laughs> my but, fault. But 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 uh, Sa uh, Sally Hansen's anything that. Uh, so so, but the key the key is the smoothness in the shape, not the yeah, density totally. or anything of the lacquer. No, or anything. yeah, it's not. Yeah. That. And, okay. the, and the clarity, D. Like, the clarity, clarity, the clarity, the clarity yeah. the most. The clarity, the okay. most. Like even like while it doesn't look as pretty, if you had it where it wasn't super smooth, it was like kind of that thready. It's still fish just the same when it's wet, but oh, I, yeah. I, do it, I just do it enough that it's durable enough and clear enough. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. And What's then when it comes solar? to you, just have a good high quality torch as well. That can make a difference. And another trick is if you're using UV, when you're done, go put them in the sun for a little bit. They'll harden up even better. Like, go take okay. Yeah, that was an, another new tidbit. Oh, oh, yeah, they told you that too, eh? Marco learned everything. I got nothing to tell Marco. Marco, I don't even know why you're here. Uh, but uh, There's more to learn. Yeah, but but the couple of key takeaways again on the Pertagon, don't overweight them. It's a good point. Make sure like a lot of these are thread bodies. There's a million difference, but have a version of a Cooley Roa and a Gasolina and then something light and then fill the rest in the middle. And um, the the the, um, the the wing case is worth it on the flies that have it. If they like not in the Cooley Roa, like it does. It does fish better with a wing case. They 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 must target it. They must know it's food. All right. Come on, now when people are oh no, they're not gonna be mad at me. They're not gonna be mad at me yet. Okay. <clears throat> so jig streamer. I know we were talking all the articulated, all that Kelly Gallup stuff, all that, all that good stuff. Wicked, not saying it's just is it essential? No, it's damn fun. Good for maybe essential for big uh trout. This is not that. This is a jig streamer. And this is one I'm like obsessed with on the mo motion of it. Um, so it works in still waters and rivers for sure. But it just have one that's a bait fish. One's a sculpin. One's a crayfish. And a couple of my favorites uh, or versions of them. Um, and you have George Daniel and he calls this a Crelex minnow. Uh, I call it a sparkler because I think the sparkler was invented first. But um this is probably one of the like the best river streamers i've used i mean the sparkler has been around for forever but you'll notice really really big beads so this is like the inverse of the pertagon i go four mil heavy brutally heavy i want it to really sink fast and that's where because I, when i'm fishing that actively i really want that jigging motion like i want it to just go and yeah walleye guys figured it out about 100 years ago uh, f fishing like you know marabou jigs but that that pat that way it moves so you can fish it euro or not i don't care so it, just the key being the fast strips with this one little fast strips like this it will jig um casting across and fishing 45 the best is, we found is 45 degrees kind of coming back at you it's almost like it's darting away from you you can just 
manipulate very aggressively with the fly rod or with your hand and is you can really do no wrong but that heavy bead and with it being a jig it doesn't hang up it's just absolutely deadly fish will come from like flying out for that thing bass whatever uh it really is the motion but that particular pattern you can if you have other patterns put a big bead on it that you like but that jig motion is absolutely something to it but it works the best with heavy weight the other trick you can do is it allows you to fish above a fish if you have to like maybe it's under a tree or you know something you can hold in the current and just pulse your rod and just let it drop and that it'll just go and so i really want you see how these ones have like almost like a 90 degree angle so <clears throat> look for when you're picking your jig hooks or whatever and you that, that's the one time I want that that aggressive angle there because it's it gets more jig action. I'm not doing Will Smith getting jiggy with it. I refuse to get to make that joke, but it goes this way. Uh, that will get more jig action. Uh, then pick your favorite sculpin. Uh, um, there's a million of them, um, but a jig sculpin. <clears throat> I mean, fish love sculpins. We all know that. Uh, this what 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 I think it mimics the behavior of a sculpin perfectly in the fact that it's nose down. This is not one I'm going to fish erratically. I don't care euro rod, regular rod, whatever. You're going to more high stick this one. I do it with a lot of clients on their regular rods. Um, and what I take is that you can get a little bit of wax or you know those little paint markers, and you just make a little mark above where your your leader will go, so it's above the water, and you can just kind of high stick it all the way through and give it the odd little jig. Um, it, what I like is it's going to be right on the bottom. When you jig it up, it's just like a sculpin going right back down. And man, do we thump big browns on that. It just, it's deadly on the credit for sure uh, as well, but I, I am the grand. But so that's this, the way you're fishing this one is just little, just little pulsing jigs upstream, letting it drift out and letting it just be, do its sculpin thing at the bottom. And then you got to have an essential fly as a woolly bugger version. Uh, this one I like with rubber legs. Uh, that's a crayfish to me. So um, I'll fish this one differently a little bit, and then I'll go more across and let it swing around. So this is, a, you know, your classic swing with the odd little twitch. So I'll just twitch it as it goes around. But I don't retrieve. So a lot of people want to retrieve it. Give it a pulse. Like, so if that's the line, I'm going to pulse and let go, pulse and let go. So I was just going across, it's going poof, boom, like that, like a crayfish would kind of move up in the water. So uh, that's called that pulse retrieve with take your favorite crayfish pattern, stick it on a jig hook. It gets right down. When I pulse it, it kicks. When I pulse it, it kicks. So that, that it's really the fly design. I don't care what you stick on, pick your favorite patterns, but you got to have a, you got to have a couple bait fish. You got to have a sculpin. You got to have a crayfish. For that a uh, Crelex looking axle for what what, uh, what kind of flash material is that? That's not. Crystal Are you going to ask it? about a sparkler? Like you're going to get the ghost Ian James tackling you. He's going to visit you tonight, man. I've He's got like... I've got like the I've got like wet flies like of that material, but I yeah, can't. Yeah, so there, find... there's a whole you, there's a couple like you can you you can use angel hair. You can use I think there's a actual material called Crelex. I'm yeah. Not... I think... Okay. I I just use I was talking about a guy named Dave Downey. He does a whole bunch of like flashaboo that's like just crinkly. Um, I mean, just gold and silver and flashaboo would work. I wouldn't get too hung up on it. But if you look up Crelex minnow, I think but that's like you know, that's like limp, right? It's not stiff. That, yeah, that it's, it's limp. Yeah, you want it mobility. And then I like this is uh, there's two versions. You can if you look it up. This one they fold like if you look, like George Daniel ties one where he kind of folds it back. That's so it gives you a big minnow profile. And then I'll do small ones with just 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 tying flash would be like um, off the hook, like so really thin. But this profile is really really good. It's a good bait fish profile. But yeah, like you if you find I'm sure Flash Abu has it. Just gold and silver. Okay. But yeah, but yeah, like mobile angel hair is a good one. Uh, if you can find that stuff, that'll work just as well. Um, I just knew there was like a a Crelex, like a special. I don't know if it matters. No, I just I think it's, it's yeah. Like I like li literally um, anything. Like I'm sure I just don't. I don't want that flashy. But I want it like see how it's kind of crinkly. I just yeah. want it. I don't want that. I maybe it probably wouldn't matter. I don't like. I don't want that. Just that limp, limp gold flashy. But it's like bleh. Like it, it's got a little bit of 
stiffness to it. Angel hair works really good. Like that's what Ian okay. uses for those. But but if you look up Crelex or something like that, or uh, if you look up Humongous Flash, they'll probably be good too. The fly called a Humongous. They tie a lot of a lot of that flash is like that. And uh, yeah, for so, the for the woolly bugger, are you a member of the cult of the thin mint or brown is the way to go? The thin mint. Well, I don't even know what you're talking about. What's that? What's this all about? Never mind. Oh, the, I, you, I feel you, like I'm not part of something I should be. You never heard of those ones? Nope. You have to do some research, Ian. All right. Um, yeah, I just I latch like olive or brown marabou onto a hook. I dub some type of dubbing and stick a few rubber legs on it. <laughs> That's, uh, and that is a crayfish. But you can put whatever the hell you want. I don't split claws. I don't do anything. Like, you know, it, it, if it takes it as a sculpin, I won't tell. You know, you know, like, you know, so like, but I do, I do, I do have a pick your favorite sculpin. I will have a specific sculpin pattern for sure. Uh, whether it be, you know, I tie, there's one on me tying, like whatever, pick your favorite. Well, it doesn't matter. Whichever one you have confidence in, it's the heavy bead on the jig. And you can see, again, it's one of those, um, you know, I use a Hannock, like a six or an eight. I can't remember that. I think it's called Big uh, big Game or something like that. But it doesn't really matter. It's just that you want a pretty large jig hook with a heavy bead. And if you, like some of them, if you actually took like, a walleye fisherman's jig head that'll work just as good. It's just, what's the quality of the hook? By the way, the woolly bugger is my favorite large fly. I just never knew it was a crayfish. I had no idea what what I was fishing. Ah, it could be a leech, could be whatever. My joke is when I catch one, what do you take it for? Oh, he's not talking. And like I've never had a uh, right, but uh, you can use that joke. Um, but yeah, I I I, I kind of had that like ah, what well, woolly bugger did, looks like a great leech, looks like this, looks like that. But I always thought of it as a crayfish. Maybe sculpin, but I, I fish it as a crayfish myself. I just, I just like that it has a gold head that attracts, and then it has really subtle, yep. quiet colors that – sorry, the gold head that brings them in, and then the okay. subtle colors that makes them – Yeah, hit. and I do like the rubber legs on this one. Like, uh, like, I'm not overboard on rubber legs, but there's something about – yeah, you're right, brings it in, and there's all kinds of movement. It just feels crayfishy. <laughs> and you'd make them that big? Like, that's twice the length of the hook hook length. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we tie, in Canada, we tie our tails too short. Huh. And when George Daniel's on here, you can say I disagree with him on one thing. He's really big on the 50%. He'll probably tell you, like, he he, he likes his hooks 50%, like right there. Um, I like a lot of motion. Most of the predators will come up and take the whole thing anyways. It's not a, that huge of a fly. And you get really nice. When that jig, it's, you got to think of it's kicking that tail. I want... What we learned from the Australians, holy hell, those guys fish tiny little hooks and their tails are like like 10 times the length of the hook. And you're, um, we really learned that we tie, we for some reason tie, they all across the world are like, why do you tie your tails so short? We're like big bodies, short tails, where everybody else is short bodies, long tail. Yeah, I've been afraid of short strikes. So that's been my yeah. thinking. So you're, you're saying push them out. All right. Yeah, so they let them lock up. Yeah, and you get the odd one, short sure, strike. Yeah, but they'll probably usually come back, and I, they lock up pretty good because they they take it very like it's that uh, like that presentation, that movement, and again like the sculpin, by the long tail and rabbit. It's just like boom, boom, and they'll they'll scarf it. Yeah, I probably I, miss some because they they nip the tail, but I think the the thing about the uh, hook position in the middle of the hook depends on if you're fishing and articulated streamer where you've got solid materials in the back and it's a nip at the back and feel the body then they know it's not real and you like you're done but if you've got marabou in the back they'll come back for it at least that's my my theory so your, sec your second strike is better yeah 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 but they uh they scarf it down pretty good they'll crush it on that like i mean we've all swung a um, woolly bugger we get it but um, the key being on this one, just make sure you're getting it down. Like I like the jig because it's ticking along, and that pulse is uh, is 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 a really cool retrieve. Like it's just you're, like again, you're letting go, letting go, letting go. So that's a lot different than retrieving. Like it's not going here; it's just pulsing, going back down, pulsing, going back down. I keep it way lower in the water. That way, way I... lower in the water, and you you just pulse, pulse, and then you can take a, uh, pulse, pulse, pulse. Swing it, pull. And it's right with that heavy. It's just right there, and you're not staying. And, and and if that bumps a rock or whatever, it's just like a crankbait bump, bump bouncing off a rock, just boop. You know, very natural. 
So you're and doing that, down and across 45 degrees yep. with that pulse. That one, yep. On this one, yep. With this one, totally upstream. And with this one, free for all. Like I'm stripping it this way. I'm casting over here. <laughs> like I just boop, 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 strip, strip, strip. It's going, it's bait fish moving around. They just come flying out. And if I take the little kids out and they're not having a good time, just put them on the top of a riffle, give them that, that Crelex, put a fly rod in their hand, just, they'll stand there and pulse it in the in the current. And the fish just come and crank it. And they have a black, and then they just plop it back out. Boop, they'll, they'll stand there and it just brings them in. But right, every time you it. chunk the rod, it's going, but if I if I take the jig hook off, it's like half as effective. It's it, it really does kick and it does work really good on the uh, on this one, like for a crayfish. Yeah. Sorry, can you say again what does a jig hook do for that uh, minnow pattern? It just uh, it, it it make when you see it in the water, it's so erratic. It's just like because the more you strip it, it's just like it just kicks up and down, and so it's I think it looks like a wounded minnow or something. When you do it fast, it just Gives it a lot of action, so it go, goes like that. So if you do a little, you mean the, grip, you mean the weight cool. of the of the head gives yeah. it the weight of the head, right? The weight of the head and the position of the jig eye. Like you see, that's not coming off straight. Like when I'm pulling right. that, that's pulling this up. Like so, if that was just straight off here, I'm pulling straight. When I pull that, they'll fly by virtue of I got a scientist on line. We call that physics. <laughs> uh, it's it more will, horizontal. Yeah, it's gonna pull. It pulls the fly. Right. It, it really, like, yeah, they don't snag. They fish different. This one I'm just 100% don't want to snag because this one I want to fish slow, deep, and just kind of bouncing it off, like a sculpin bouncing off the rum. Boom. I'm not trying the the zoo cougar up in the top that's a like a wounded sculpin. That's big fish hunting. This is just general. You catch enough big fish doing this, but that's a great way to go through pools and stuff like that. Oh, and by the way, like this works really good for swinging for steelhead too this technique like you, you know everybody you know we all use swing sync it but you wanted to go to the river and just swing for steel look tie a purple one put a red orange bead on the top and let it rip or a white one is that hack do you hackle the front of the woolly bugger is that what that no. is or is that no, just, just dubbing dub it's just dubbing just dubbing okay yeah various dubbings or um polar chenille sometimes i don't know like what, what, whatever mood I'm in, sometimes rabbit, sure. and brush it out, but just olive and brown. I don't know. Feeling, I, I mean, there's a person who's trying, got so into crayfish fishing, who's going by the color of the crayfish. So you might be right that the fish like it because it's softer shell. That's too involved. The, the, the bunny leech is a traditional bunny leech, like the, the muddler there. This one, yeah, it's just a sculpin. Yeah, like, uh, but is it, is like, and you've hackled like a section of the leather around there? Yeah, the other, just... I would. This, this is one version. I the one. I, if you look up Ian Sculpin, yeah, Chris from Drift ties the one I like. I I didn't put a picture on here because I felt like I was promoting my own fly. <laughs> but I have right. a couple rubber legs sticking out. I hackle it with marabou and barred rabbit this way. Um, okay. This is just hackled with rabbit, and okay. the body like I this one's dubbed with pearl, but you know you, you don't you, you optional. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it, like I do like the 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 strip the rabbit strip inverted like this because it does ride that way. But uh, I like like brown or gray. But if you can find barred ones, but that sculpin that Chris tied, like I tied it, he just tied it better and made a quick video about it. That one just crushes it. All I did was I got tired of this was too much work doing the rabbit. I didn't like doing a dubbing loop. Uh, and then the one, I didn't like wrapping around, so I just put marabou because I'm lazy. <laughs> really good. all right coming in next oh my god i can't believe you put a mob fly mob what, fly. what kind of person mob fly i told you everybody's gonna leave there oh Mar uh, geez i say shit fly and he pays attention i show mob fly and he leaves it's considered a junk fly moro but we will outfish Many flies in many situations, killer in still water and moving water. The key is its unique presentation. So we got to get over the mop. Don't be mop haters. Uh, you only need two, um, green and white or off. This is the this is the holy grail if you can find this color, the cream mop. Um, and a bunch of them here. A um, couple things. Um, you only need two colors. Cream, if you can find it, good luck. If you go to Canadian Tire, it's impossible to find. And there's white, you know, but cream color, 
green, you know, you can buy that at the dollar store. I think we've all heard about mop flies. The only thing I would do is make sure when you're tying it, I like, if you look at Devin Olson, the way he ties it, I like the way he ties it. He puts a thread base, he puts a glue on top, and then he puts the mop on top and wraps the thread around it. Um, it's just more durable. Um, you can dub it two different ways. Hairs here on the, I like the exact like this. These aren't my ties, but they're close enough. Uh, um, I like hairs here on this one, black rib on this one. Um, the big difference with a mop fly, it's really good for fast, deep water. It's really good in the wind. It would be the one I would put on when I said I couldn't anchor. So back to that fast water with a, with a, with an indicator, the indicator will not be able to, it will slow down the indicator. Once it gets down to the depth, what's interesting about a mop fly, that sucker holds. And so it anchors down there. So it is your anchor fly on windy days. It, it will outfish flies because it's so slow of a drift and that movement, we, we can hate it all we want. It'll out, like you're crazy not to go through a pool with a mop fly at a time. There are times it just will outfish and I've seen big browns be like five feet for it. And yeah, wild ones, yeah, clear. Like we were fishing in Quebec and uh, Evo, who's my buddy on Team Canada, he's telling me all these crazy wild browns. So we couldn't catch them. We were practicing, it was moral. We were practicing up in the, for that yeah. competition. We put on a chartreuse mop and just like all of a sudden they came from like the bank. They, you know, I don't know where they came from. They were just flying all over the place. Um, those Power two, bait. Yeah, they're just really, really good. So this one, you could argue, does look like a crane fly larva. Makes you sleep better at night. Sure, it does. Uh, you could say this is a green weenie for all those technical Pennsylvania people. Um, they just work. But the key is it fishes different. It's, it's not, don't strip it. Don't do anything with it. Do that. If you're fishing a still water, put it under an indicator and tell me it doesn't crush. <laughs> you can't, it's unbelievable. Um, it works for steelhead. And then also there's unweighted. I couldn't find an image of an un unweighted one. So the unweighted one is just tie it without a bead. Um, so unweighted ones are only for still water, but they just kind of slow sink and you kind of strip them back in. They move around. They're durable as hell. Um, I had one client who set a record. Um, is Marco on the line? He'll know the person at the Franklin Club. He caught over 100 on the same fly fish so he was taking me pictures he did a season with one line he kept setting and then he lost the fly in the in the woods um so that gerard gerard caught over 100 on one mop fly i but, heard yeah oops oh whoop, i'm jumping ahead so just like i know i, I saved them up to the end for the groaners but if you don't fish mops i think give it a try um you do want a relatively heavy bead to get them down um, but they do hold down there and they don't hang up. So I really like on um, big bouldery rivers that are deep and you're snagging and it's annoying. Um, it's really my big water. I need to get down a hold of fly and then put a small nymph above it um, or just fish the mop fly. But, uh, you know, it'll get a small nymph and hold it down there. Just slows the drift and just rolls down there. It is a different presentation noticeably different so so much that i put it to me as an essential fly because i would now have limited confidence fishing in a lot of situations of a mop fly what is the dark hackle on that green one? Oh, it's just a black rabbit or black ice dub i like me personally this was just a picture i found a black peacock ice dub good enough so if you've got a weight on it then you're holding it very still letting the current take it at its slow speed if yep. you've got no weight it sounds like you're really bobbing it around a lot yeah, on still water, only on still water, not in a river. But uh, but if you do, it'll it'll just because it, it does absorb. And then I like it. I'll just kind of twitch it and go, and just kind of like sausages around down there. But it's it, but it, while it's floating around, it's going like this, right? It's got this really weird wiggly motion, like a, kind of like a squirmy or something like that. And they're durable as hell. And then they're super quick to tie. So if you do lose them, you don't care. Um, but I can't this, believe you would like. I can't believe you would like uh, durable and uh, simple, dur durable and squirmy. Yeah, no, no. That is there a squirmy on here? I didn't show you a squirmy. I hate the squirmy. Dude, it's uh, it fishes okay, but it's not durable. And I'll take a yeah. mop over a squirmy any day because a squirmy drifts like shit. Uh, a mop digs in and fishes completely different than anything. There's, I don't know if you can find another way to present a fly the same way. Cause it, and so on a windy day or, 
is if you need to get down an anchor somewhere, that fly gets down there. It, you'll feel it. You'll see the difference. An indicator, it's slower. If you're, if you're check Euro nymphing, you'll feel the difference. It's slower. It just rolls down there, and it just grabs in those big, heavy currents. So I like it steelhead fishing, even if I'm not catching on that one. I like it a lot to get uh, like a little egg down or something like that, and really big, heavy, well, like an agra or something. It'll get right down and just like hold in that current. So pretty good. Now, again, if you can find the cream, pretty good luck. It, it'll get put you on. It'll put you on a little journey to try to find it, because um, not white cream. So that's 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 the fun part of the moth. These are this one. This color is simple to find. Stop in can, every oh, Canadian tire. What's that? You got to stop in every Canadian tire. It's impossible. Every dollar store can't be done. I found one place in the U.S. where the guy. I don't know where he found them, but he sells them clipped. And I'm like, is that the, and he's like, yeah, it's the real cream. The real. It is. And then say, so, well, people try these for a case. I farted around gray ones for a case caddis and pink ones. Like they all kind of work, but everybody's whittled it down. You only need two colors. Like, go ahead, do whatever you want. Chartreuse is everywhere. Chartreuse is amazing too. It works. It works way better for no reason when it shouldn't. Oh, it's a clear day and there's like wild brown shot. Let me put a chartreuse stupid looking fly through the middle. Oh, they just moved eight feet for it where I couldn't catch it before. <laughs> isn't, thought... your, isn't your green there a chartreuse? What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about orange? Chris Chris was throwing an orange all the time. It looked like a big cheesy on the end of his Yeah, eh, it's all right. I can tell you something. Yeah, like there's orange. I've tried, uh, I know, I keep mentioning George Daniel comes there. He likes... Um, What's one other color? What's it called? Uh, red red for smallmouth is good. Yeah, what's the, um, it's like a, I don't know, like a yellowish kind of, I don't know, like, a, yeah, they call, the, they call the orange ones Cheetos. That's what they call them. But I don't know. I would, you could, I mean, go to go crazy, uh, but if you need to, but just remember it does drift differently and uh, we might hate it. Um, so that was my five essential flies. A little surprise at the end, but I did stop and go, yeah, one more. I said five. It's an easy one. It's not going to surprise anybody. But maybe I'll ask, what would be your, before I do that, what would be your essential last fly? Puke what fly. What's that? Puke, puke, puke fly. Puke fly. Pretty good. Stone fly. That's right. Oh, stone fly. Good one. Deer hair oh, caddis. Deer hair caddis. Yeah. Drunken disorder. <laughs> uh, I didn't even hear that. I ignore that. Uh, we need to talk. Supremacy. One of your members is drunk and disorderly. Okay, I heard that. Uh, okay, yeah, drunk and disorderly. Okay. Drone stone. Drone, oh, drone stone. Go heavy on the stones. Well, I'm gonna go to go to the breakfast table. Eggs, guys. You gotta have uh -huh. eggs. How do you forget about the huevos? Crazy not to have eggs. So all year round, too, not just for steelhead fishing. Don't forget about it. They're genetically programmed to eat eggs. They eat eggs all the time. So, you know, eggs with no weight, you can go with all different. You can play with slush jelly from F and F. You can go eggs to see. You can do whatever the hell you want for egg patterns. But um, an unweighted egg can be deadly. Little tip, you can fish it as a dry fly. Just so you know. Hmm. Wow. I thought he was doing that for goldfish this year. Caught goldfish fishing dry, uh, eggs like dry flies. They work really, really good. You can put little booby eyes on them and fish them just under the surface, and they will eat them like crazy. You can put a bead in front of it. You can do whatever you want. You hang them on the indicator in a still water. They'll crush it. You steelhead seem to like them quite a bit. Um, but you know, you can fish. Just, I think everybody goes steel. Like we all have confidence in eggs from steelhead fishing. But we forget that you can just put an egg through at any time, and a lot of fish will just eat it for sure. They just oh, and they know what it is. Oh, it's an egg. Oh, but it's like July. Oh, you know. <laughs> so it's a uh, to me it was the last essential fly. Those are all good ones, but I forgot like the stone fly stuff like that. Um, but uh, for me, uh, egg flies. There's about we'd be here all day talking about different types of variations of egg flies. But that's that would be my. If I it didn't make the top five, but it was right behind it. Would you fish an egg fly over row? Sorry, it's a it's a it's a heretical question, but I'm a I'm a member of the Gandhi Fishing Club, and the longest fishing I've done is done is on noodle rods with row on the Ganaraska. Would you ever fish 
eggs over row if you if you're comfortable fishing row? Um, I don't know. Like I don't fish a lot of row. Like so, uh, to me, a row is really good when it's cold. Like I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to that uh, stuff, but I know what when, when it's cold water. The row guys just kick my ass because they think that's where the the the, like the fish are. They're a little more docile. I think the scent, the natural piece of it. I like an egg fly just by itself because it looks really natural to me. But I can't argue that row crushes it <laughs> for sure. But I have no, I would have no trouble going toe to toe with somebody fishing row. No problem. Like I don't feel like the person has an advantage with row at all, unless it's really really cold. Like when it's really cold and like it's like you know. December and the pools free like it's really hard to get a fish to move. I'm like, okay. I actually like fishing like something subtle behind it, but it's a fair question. Like you're fishing a natural over a over yeah. a presentation. But I like the way like eggs drift. And so I, they do drift really, really nice. And if you get the right weight, they kind of roll really natural. And my favorite colors, apricot. I like uh like a light, light pink, uh, and then a steelhead orange. So like that steelhead orange color apricot uh this is and this was a really bad version of light pink but uh and then this is kind of a blend of a bunch but i mean um i i will i'll mess around too with opaque and translucent so um like so have eggs that are opaque for when it's low light um, when it's really clear water and brighter i like translucent so i don't necessarily always go smaller uh, but i do tie a no cm egg as well uh, which is like an egg clipped with the smallest amount you could ever imagine on a hook. Yeah, when when the when the fish get tough on the gany, and I only tie three egg sacks, and so the really small ones really kick ass. I see guys tying. I mean, this is this is with sacks, but it's gotta it's gotta translate into the flies as well. The really tiny ones, if they're feeling in a negative mood. Yeah. Totally yep. change the game. I've caught fish with uh, Paul Castellano on the Niagara River. Like, so where he convinced me years and years ago, we were fishing. I mean, when I say small, like, I mean, it is a nothing. Like, it's just a clip of a of egg yarn on a hook. Um, we're 30 feet down, hooking steelhead, and, like, you know, and he's drifting the boat and all that kind of stuff. And I'm like, they can see it that far down. They can see it on the mainland. <laughs> like, it's, it'll, it's a great back pocket. And then it also works lots of times when, like, we kind of use eggs. Yeah. They're, when they're, they're running steelhead, but we forget about them for brown trout. We forget about them just for, in general, fish like eggs. They just do. Like, they know what it is. They know it's food. They're not that picky all the time, right? So, yeah, so I did, again, it's a sixth one, borderline. I, I waffled between the mop and that, but the, this loss to the mop, because the mop has a completely different presentation than any other fly I, uh, I have in my box. Where are the amps? Where does the ant fit in your hierarchy? Oh, it'd be hot. Well, it'd be the one I forget about the most when I get my ass kicked. Yeah, like you know, when all those are like ants are pretty good. I learned I have a love hate relationship with ants because it's the one you go after. Ah, ants. That's what it was. Um, yeah. So I mean, and the right. I mean, we know trout love ants for sure. Uh, for sure. For sure. For sure. But they're very specific. There's only a certain time of year they're on ants, but you're right. When they're on ants, you better have a couple ants in your back pocket and not in your pants, just your back pocket. But ants, ants are pretty good. We're, sure. uh, Go ahead. we're, uh, were mops around when Ian was around? Did he have an opinion no. on mops? No, no, I would love to, but I think he would have loved it. I'm going would, to, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he loved all it. over that. He loved everything about it. If I like, he would have loved to have that secret. Like, he would have loved the way it fished. He would have loved everything about a mop. Um, but, but, uh, they're they're good, a good fly, but yeah, good question on it. Good comment. And we could be here. That's why we have lots of flies. But if I said purely essential, I could get by with those versions of pheasant tail, version of a hair's ear, all that stuff. I'd fill a pretty good fly box. I'd feel pretty good about it. When you were talking about the pertagons with the jig hooks or not jig hooks, is there a disadvantage to using a jig hook, or is it just like a uh, preference thing? Uh, the only disadvantage, like not a huge one, um, is just uh, the gap between the hook point and the hook eye. You get better hookups with uh, without a jig hook, like, because we we were you gotta remember we fish pertagons pretty small, mm -hmm. right? So they're like in the 18s and 16, like a lot of 16s, 18s, sometimes 20. 
Um, I like to keep the maximum hook. You know, at a 14, who cares? Uh, but as flies get smaller, I don't like jig hooks very out, very much. And that's this solely just because the like the jig this is bent down here, and then this gets smaller and smaller, mm -hmm. smaller, and so you miss a lot of fish. Yeah, you know, on on that point, isn't the jig hook trying to get it more horizontal? Isn't that the kind of point versus the non jig hook? Yeah, maybe. Like I like I so I use it like if I'm suspending something, sure. Like when it's tumbling down the river. I think it, like I, I always think of a jig hooks as is two reasons not to snag the bottom and you get good hook sets when you do because it's like upside inverted and it's in the top of the mouth but yeah but if, if you really like I said if you really like jig hooks fish them for sure I just the pertagons specifically because we fish them pretty small I um I'll, I again I like jig hooks I use lots of them uh, just not on pertagons me and it's again because you just you feel like you're missing a lot of fish uh, not missing a lot, but missing fish that, that I could potentially not miss. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't like jig hooks in 18s and 20s. I don't even know if there's a 20. They come out with 18s. I'm like, yeah. It just feel yeah, like yeah. so. I end up bending the hook out more and more and more, like because it like I like it, there's no you run across your finger and it's just there's nothing. So it like that's a pretty small fly to to hook to hook something, especially in 18 and yeah. I, I, 16s. I'm not. I'll get away with them like because i like the jig superb from hannock because it's got a super aggressive bent out jig hook that kind of gets away from it which is probably the best i could do but so in a scenario like with the um i'm not going to try to say it in spanish but the red ass yeah it, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah the um the uh the bead is like kind of eating up a bit of that gap isn't it yeah this is why the way this guy tied it you could so what if, I, if i tie if you watch one of my videos the way this is where it depends who you you talk to you. Um, if you take a, a slotted bead and put it on a straight hook, and you'll uh, you can watch videos of me tying. I'll turn the hook upside down and then run the thread, so the ball is almost sitting on the top. Okay. And so it, it's like that. Does that make sense? That, yeah. 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 And then, but now it's a jig hook, anyways. It inverts. Kind of like the other, kind of like the other part of Gonzo. Yeah, and it inverts, and it's a jig. Like it goes upside down, and you get a better gap. Again, irrelevant for bigger flies. I, 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 I use borrows beads and don't forget to put them on the right way. Yeah, so that, that's a good one. I've done a few of those. They're, yeah, the wrong way is annoying. And Moro's beads are great because they they don't take a ton of thread. They just they're really fast. But they're my favorites. But yeah, great question. But that that's why. I I, I heard on a comp discussion, and I'm going to go back to the mop. I'm going to say one one word together. Have you ever thought about a booby mop? Oh yeah, do it all the time. On the washing line. Yep. Yep. Yes, what's I have. A, what's a booby mop? A booby mop is taking eyes like this. Right? And my joke, those can't be real. You can use that one joke too. Um, so the booby eyes here, which are two foam eyes. And then you just tie a mop. Oops. And instead of a bead, you got booby eyes. Yeah. Yeah, on the washing line with a sweep line or something. Yeah, it, 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 it's got a weird point. I was fishing, like, some guys really like it. Um, it's okay. Like, I, it's okay. Like, I'd not say it, it's not, not a bad move. It's, it's moderately, if I, like, uh, it, uh, it's weird because it's kind of counterbalancing itself because the moth wants this thing and the booby eyes want to keep it up. But it is a, for sure a fly people use. You can, yeah, for sure. And, you know, have a few. I just haven't fished in a while, but. You know, it's a it's a good enough fly for sure. I much prefer them kind of under indicators mobs myself. Ian, I just wanted to thank you for making this presentation so interactive tonight. I mean, it's been outstanding just in terms of the interactivity and people being able to chime in and really address the questions we've had. So thank you for being so so competent and so open in your presentation style. Oh, thanks, and thanks for asking great questions. I like having a conversation. Thank you for that.